Okay, so just since I was introduced, I can skip this. So I work at Rakuten Institute of Technology in Singapore, where I do research work on natural language processing, as well as um, more of text data and also generic data analysis. So I studied at NTU and also in Germany at Saarland. So um, this talk, oh, this feedback. This talk is not an introduction to tuto or tutorial to NLP. I'm not going to bombard you with a lot of maths and what you'll see. Maybe tomorrow and a lot of code. But yeah, there will be a lot of lists because I went online and requested that people send me lists that I can share with you. And then um, hopefully there'll be more time for sharing session and asking me questions on NLP or any other OSS stuff. So yeah, three things that I will just go through today. The survey of some NLP and deep learning tools, um, very brief. My experience with open source and also how to contribute, which is something scary at the start, but you realize it's fun and addictive. Yeah, so as um, the MC have introduced, NLP is the computational learning of um, language by the computer, as well as trying to produce it. And there are various applications that we're used to, like uh, text summary, question and answering, Watson. You have Google Translate, which is something that uh, is close to what I work with. And then there's Chatbot. This is a really cool one. It tells you about housing prices and where to buy houses. It's on the ERA website, if I'm not wrong. And um, there are two main medium of text or language. One is speech and the other is text. And what we have is really uh, the understanding and production of speech that's under the speech portion of NLP, which I am not an uh, ex maker, so I will not make fun of the technology and introduce it. But yeah, I'm more towards the text analysis side where there are actually three things that usually happen is the analysis of text, the prediction of tasks, like you want to know whether something is a positive or negative review, or something like knowledge extraction, knowing um, what kind of word represents what kind of attributes, and what kind of word actually tells you like whether the apple is a fruit or a car is a fruit. And generating it's more of what we experience at the application site, where you have chatbots, translation summary, as we have seen previously. So these are the notable libraries, um, NLTK, I'll not list all of them, but just note on the ones that are start, the start ones are actually machine learning libraries with some text capabilities that will be helpful if you deal with text. And um, the second one is actually very interesting, it's called Vopal Webit. It's something that people rarely use, but it's pretty fun. I tried it for myself. The last one is popular among the Java coders, it's called Veka. And yeah, I work with NLTK, the first one, and as well as contribution to some of these that I've listed here. But here's a kind of snapshot of what I feel like. This is subjective view. Uh, NLTK is a good introduction to NLP. It's not exactly what you use in the industry. Um, GenSim is really good and fast for doc training documents and word embeddings. So I'll go through very briefly what it means if we have some time. And then Pattern is a library that deals with, um, there's a lot of rules encoded into it. It deals with European languages and it's really good in terms of analyzing what kind of, what is the root word of a word, because you know German words are really, really long. So I have 15 minutes left. And, um, and so on and so on. The list never ends, but I promise at the end there will be a link to all the lists. So at Rakuten, we have our own NLP technology too. Our morphological analyzer, which we deal with Chinese and Japanese text mostly. And also category to vec, this is very interesting. It's actually, uh, you know, Rakuten is a marketplace, so we have a lot of categories of items. And what we do is we want to automatically classify them and in, uh, mine interesting information through this category. So this will change them into vectors. So what is deep learning exactly? It's um, to what Neil Lawrence says, it's kind of shining a light at the NLP world, which is us, and say that, okay, now you're gonna get crashed by a car soon, which is true. So at the start, a few years ago, which is two years ago, it's just all about embeddings, converting words into numbers, and analyzing them through numbers. Now today, the state of art that you should Google for, you work off with NLP, is called recurrent neural nets, or more recently, it's uh, general adversarial nets. But yeah, we can go into details through the Q&A. So these are very interesting libraries that came out of the NLP community doing machine translation and sequence to sequence. 
So sequence to sequence just means that given an original sequence, let's say in English, I will encode, and encode them into some sort of uh, number and then produce some sort of uh, translation into the target language, maybe French or German or Chinese. So the deep learning libraries, I'm going a little fast, but the deep learning libraries, um, they are all popular. Each one has their own big companies, backers, as you see, Google has TensorFlow, Baidu has Pedopedo. Um, MXNet is actually adopted by Amazon. Microsoft has their own CNTK. And Torch has, is backed by Facebook or originated from NYU. So some bits, which is the interesting part of the talk, of why I started contributing to NLTK. At first, I have to solve this problem, where I have sentences with the word bank, and I don't know which bank it is. Is it the river bank, or is it a financial bank, or is it a long plank, which is also a bank? I didn't know that. And then I wrote this kind of pseudocode, which it doesn't look so clean. It actually looks like this, but it's all Python. So I thought it would be great if I can stop copying and pasting this code in every of my project, and I just do this. So yeah, from NLTK import for all those Python, non-Python users, this is actually just an import line to say that I can import a function. And what I did was I just fork it, I commit it, I push, I do a pull request, and amazingly, the, the original creator of NLTK merged the code, and we met during a conference. And then I started coding more, and I added this module called translation module, which does most part of the machine translation code. It was presented in PyCon. And nowadays, I just fix what grinds my gear. Like, there's a lot of small little parks everywhere in any open source, NLTK not exclusively. And yeah, I skipped the Moses part because I would have more time for our talks, but it's on the slides we can share later. What I really learned is two things which is beyond coding, it's really the communication. And writing a, lot of, writing a lot of tests is also part of communication to communicate that my code works. And also putting things across that is not sounding very offensive because online when you type, you might say like, I don't like this, but actually you don't say I don't like this, you say this code is doing something and breaks everything, which is not really the case, so you have to kind of tone things down, be as neutral as possible, and really how to communicate things better, things being maths formulas, because on GitHub you cannot type maths formulas, which is a good thing, but then now I think they're changing that. So how do you contribute? And first you find a library that you like, and not only NLP, you can find any library, and then um, you can just commit, as in writing code. You write code, you write. Even demos and tutorials are very helpful for users and also helpful for you to learn more. You can add new features, which is what everybody thinks that coding is. Uh, you can add new ports or wrappers, which is something that not every library would like, but for NLTK, we are open to it. And also, you can fix issues and really a lot of small little problems like minus one and floats. Um, the other thing that you can contribute without coding is actually to raise issues. Like if you found bugs that it's just, maybe it's just that the hash is not there or maybe um, if you put some sort of a strange line in and it's not necessary, you could just raise these issues without even writing any code and then somebody else can fix it. Or you can answer questions which is very helpful because that will help us save more time to prioritize what is important and then kind of answer less because, um, not because we don't want to answer, it's just that time is limited and community, we should help each other. And one last thing that I find that we can do is really share on social media. It helps a lot where you just go to Twitter and say, we love this library, not only NLTK, but everything else. So yeah, it helps the contributor to know that they're doing some useful work and also helps that um, you get more attention so that you yourself can kind of try it out after you like it. And why would you want to contribute? One is you can learn a lot. From what I see, I learned more to then I, I learned more when I started coding and trying to contribute. Then I write my own code and trying to push it out for a publication when I was doing my research. But it's very helpful when you try to re-implement things or even just implement things from scratch that people use and help you fix. So and also everything is cool when you're part of the team. Yeah, so this is um, the link to the slides. It's very short slides. We have more time for discussion. Uh, even at Rakuten, we have open source. That's just links. 
we are hiring. Yes, I need to say that. <laughs> and <laughs> yes, and this is the thing that I think most of you are looking out for. This link points you to the list where it's an um, open source project that just gives you a long list. But the thing is that it's a community curated list, so you have to vote in order for it to get merged. And that's something I think will be helpful as a general kind of opening up the world of NLP to other people, as well as NLP um, researchers and contributors to share with the world. Yeah, so I'll go back to the link here. Oh, yeah. Any questions? Sorry, did I go too fast or no questions? So I have a question. How many people does like text processing at work? <clears throat> okay, how, how many people are interested in doing text processing but have no idea where to start? Okay, start with NLTK or Spacey. Yeah, that's a good answer. Um, how many people have tasks like, I have text data but I don't know what to do with it and we need someone? No one, okay, good. <laughs> that's strange, but... Yeah, so questions. Yeah, I, I just have a question with the NLTK. Uh, is there an effort to put together some kind of uh, passing engine where you, when you communicate with other people, like you know, the YouTube comments, that you tone down the bullying, bullying, lang uh, bullying la language use in the comments and Mm -hmm. make the whole uh, ecosystem more compassionate? Yeah, so, Is there effort uh, doing that? So, so there are efforts doing anti-bluing. Uh, one big pusher is Facebook trying to push that. But it's not exactly part of any library now. There's no open source for it. And then um, the other group of people doing something related are called, uh, they call themselves social computational linguists, where they do a lot more on social media text as well as um, not only anti-bullying, but also anti-fake news, because it's a big thing in the US. And there's, a, there's even tasks to do that, like um, they, call, they are called shared tasks in the academic world, as well as competitions held by companies to give you a sample set of data, and then you try to find a way to identify bullying, access, uh, bullying content or bullying threats or comments and then, um, or fake news comments. So there are work, but it's not as prominent. It's surely not open source for now, but it will be an interesting thing to start work on. Thank you very much. No more questions? Okay, I'm too fast. Is there, is there any other questions? Any other questions? Oh. Oh, then I could go through uh, more things, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> the link was it. Maybe I have a question. Yes. Uh, how does one? Uh, how, how does one actually start uh, using some of these uh, toolkits? Uh, ah. What is the steps? How can I start using one of this? Okay, so uh, a good way to start is to look for tutorials. So on the list. There's a list of lists section where there's a list of tutorials also that uh -huh. you can work on. And um, of course, NLTK has an introduction book, but beyond that, there are more than um, how does one start. It's, uh, sorry, does it connect? No, it doesn't connect anymore. So, yeah. so, so a very good start for kind of state of art NLP is with deep learning is with TensorFlow. And then there's a text section where you can do some sort of embedding. And yeah, that's the main start that we can work with. Okay. Uh, do we have any other questions? All right. I have more questions. Oh, I'm yes. actually interested in NLP. Uh, so, um, how good is good? How good is good? Yeah. Okay. In terms of natural language processing, how good is good? How good can we get even better? How do we how do we get even better from where we have right now with uh, NLT uh, NLTK? Oh, okay. Maybe not NLTK, but generally oh, NLP. Generally, yes. So, um, I don't think there will be a case in my lifetime, at least the next 50 years, that you'll see humans being replaced by computers to do language. 
to do other things, yes. For visions, we have superhuman kind of capability now. So the computer can see better than humans. But in terms of language, there are too many complexity. And even if we do something for language, it might only be for one language, which is English. And there's still a lack of other language NLP um, processing that and we need to do. That actually comes to my next question. Yeah. Besides English, what are the languages um, are available, or what are the languages that is up and coming in terms from a language processing standpoint uh, mm -hmm. that I can start uh, uh, translating or, or, or you know uh, uh, understanding the context behind that language besides English? What are the languages? So uh, in machine translation, you work with multiple languages. The fun thing is every language will be converted into numbers. In that sense, every language can be processed. But there are intricacies like, um, you know, if you want to convert languages, words into a number, you have to have words. But you realize that Chinese have no space. How you define a word is somehow iffy. So those are still open questions in the world of research. In industries, um, they have been using whatever the research have produced, but they also have, they are kind of the synergy creating open source and research together such that it works for more than English itself. So Microsoft recently have uh, machine translation for English Korean, if I'm not wrong, but that's their 11 language that they push for kind of deep learning kind of machine translation. All right. Ah, ah yes, there we go. We have questions, yes. Um, I, I guess I have a specific question about an area of uh, NLP. And, and that's um, how y you mentioned word embeddings and that you can take like sentences or words and transform them into numbers that are easier to process. Yeah. Um, how, how does that work? Like how can a, a word be represented by a number and how does that huh. allow you to make, how does that allow you to process them more easily? So that is a very, very long answer that, <laughs> but, but we can go through this. So imagine, um, Imagine everything can be converted into numbers, and apples have numbers of five, and oranges have number of six, and uh, fruits have numbers of eight, but then cars have number of minus 10, and then Volkswagen or Daimler, my, uh, Mercedes have minus 12. You can see how the numbers are correlated, but how to train them, we can discuss over coffee. Okay. But that's the generic idea. You represent things as numbers, you compare them against each other. And then you do some you. weightage to it and, and so and so forth. Uh, you automatically learn that. Yes. All right. All right. That's actually a very interesting talk. Uh, thank you very much. A round of applause for Lily. And next up.